Well, 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 welcome to the mayhem Dick and Lloyd mayhem Media mayhem Market in a mayhem You might love it, you might hate it It's my favorite freaking show Hey, welcome everybody, glad you're here Is there a man in Kansas City who is all of these things, architect, rancher, pilot, industrial designer, and inventor who invents things that astronauts use in space and has a cozy office on the plaza. Uh, yes, there is, and you'll find out more in this podcast of Dick and Lloyd. Uh, wait a minute, I better get this. Uh, hello? Hey, champ, it's Buzz. Martini, yeah, how you doing? Oh, yeah, good, yeah, uh, Buzz Martini, the sales guy for our podcast, yes. Hey, <clears throat> listen, I'm working out at the club, sorry. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, I'm on the, the ecliptical thing or whatever it is, but I think this might be the last time. How come? Yeah, well, I know you got that guy, Paul Francis, he's invented all that cool stuff you can work out with at home. Or sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. At the office and stuff, uh, I'd like to... See if you can maybe hook me up with that guy. Or... Well, how come? Yeah, well, I, there's going to be some changes around here at the club. What do you mean, changes? Well, it, yeah. it's really about the equipment here. I, uh huh. I mean, I came in earlier like always. And yeah. There's this very nice young lady, very helpful. She's very attractive. She's a. Uh oh. Uh, one of these uh, uh -oh. personal yeah. trainers. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just made a comment. What? I'm always friendly to her. And okay. I uh -huh. made a comment about uh, about what? Her equipment. Oh. And uh, oh. I told her I, I thought it was uh, yeah really extraordinary. I was a big fan of her equipment and Buzz. I don't know maybe there was a misunderstanding, uh, or whatever. But you think so? They've kind of asked me if maybe I should just consider working out at home oh. from now on. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, so I'd love to talk to him and uh, <sighs> gonna enjoy the show, champ. Take uh, it easy. Uh, 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 all right. Hey, Loy, here we go. You know, one thing I like about doing this is that we like to dig into Kansas City and find people that have done phenomenal things here that not a lot of people know about. You're right about that. We find some really intriguing characters right here in Kansas City. Well, where are we now and who have we found? We are at the coolest place. We're up on the second floor of the office on the plaza of a, a mad inventor. Uh, above the boar statue. That's right. Yes, we're uh -huh. looking down on all the action here and we're with Paul Francis, who is a very successful local man who is an inventor among other things and we're going to talk about a lot of that stuff All he's right. got some great stories for hey us. paul thanks for having us in it's great to be with y'all and uh you know I, I first met loy when we were playing baseball in uh, junior high school oh really oh my god yeah, i apologize yeah. for that you were playing baseball <laughs> i was warming the bench <laughs> uh, let's start off first but give us just a little background of who you are oh gosh uh Oh, I went to college as an architect, and uh, then after I worked for some architectural firms for a while, I uh, decided to become an inventor, and uh, I was jogging around the uh, area by Troost. I was living at uh, in Hyde Park, and I thought, you know, it's kind of dangerous over here. Maybe mm -hmm. someone should invent a personal security device. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, I, so my first invention was called the Buddy System, and it was a... Uh, a little alarm that you clip on your uh, jogging shorts, and, and uh, if you pulled a grenade pin out of it, a, a light would flash and a loud buzzer would go off. And then, if you traveled, you could screw a little intrusion alarm on top of it and, and stick it over the hotel room door. So it became an intrusion alarm. Okay. And then I even okay. invented a, uh, a smoke detector that attached to it. So you had this kind of a buildable system from a, a personal security device to a travel security device. And uh, so that got me on the road to inventing, and uh, I ended up doing an uh, agreement with Con Air, the uh, personal care company. Then we got tied up having to get a nuclear 
a nuclear regulatory license for the ion chamber and the uh, smoke detector, and it became pretty expensive. Yeah, that kills most of my ideas. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. he kind Nothing of like the regulators. He, he kind of went over my head when it was pull the pin on the grenade thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You know, so, well, uh, were you in the basement with a white lab coat? I mean, what what was the deal on this? Huh? On on that, yeah, I, I uh, you know, my my mother then passed away, and I moved in the basement at my dad's house to kind of keep him company. Yeah. And so we had a Weimar on her, so she was like my secretary and uh, had a phone and an old metal desk and was drawing and designing because I was an architect so I could, you know, create these ideas on paper. And then I was taking them around to different, you know, companies that supposedly, you know, would take your invention and market it for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. And, this is uh, the caveman guy with the, you know. As a matter, yeah, those, and those guys, wheel. yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, that's something to avoid, right? Yeah, it's a total I, ripoff. Basically, <laughs> they, they just want fees from you. Sure. So, hey, that's a great idea. Okay, here, we'll do uh, some patent searching for you. That's a thousand. Oh. Okay, we're going to apply for a patent. That's, you know, a few thousand. There you we're going to put a a brochure together to send out to industry that's you know well our it, listeners are going to hear somebody who's been down the road and really done it yeah you know, about the patents and the whole deal here in a few minutes wow and, but go on Paul. yeah so so now we're in dad's basement yeah so we're Kansas working away City. down there and uh and you got your secretary the wine yeah and, mm-hmm. and that whole harassment suits in your past yeah now yeah all secretary. that yeah all that's behind me mm-hmm. and uh but uh, then, you know, of course, you got to do focus groups, you got to, you know, get a patent, you got to do all this, you know, and you got to build a prototype. And uh, so, you know, uh, money out the door, and it's like, man, you know, uh, where does it all end? You know, how, how do I end up with a product that can actually get on the market? So, yeah, you know, I kind of got a PhD in product development and uh, ended up with this agreement with Con Air, and then it kind of fell apart. So uh, the product never went anywhere. Yeah. But I did, you know, learn. Uh, everything you needed to know about inventing a new, you know, a product. Mm-hmm, sure. And of course, you know, most things in life, you got to get experience and have a number of failures to understand, you know, what it's all about. And then hopefully you can stay in the game long enough to have success. Now, Con Air, that was the hair dryer company? <clears throat> yeah. And yeah, they the, made uh, personal appliances? Yeah, the guy that, uh, Lee Rizzuto was the chairman and his mother had a uh, beauty salon in Queens and before then, they had all these, you know, heavy metal uh, professional blow dryers. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. And so he took that over to, I guess, uh, Italy and, and got it uh, an injection molded plastic version, lower cost, and started selling it to the beauty salons. And then consumers started buying it. Then that movie, Shampoo, came out with Warren, Warren Beatty, Beatty yeah. with it in his back pocket on his motorcycle, driving up to all these beautiful <laughs> gals' places and uh, mm-hmm. doing their hair. So then everyone had to have blow dried hair. Okay. And Con Air went nuts. And then they became a you know a personal care company and uh, and they were a pretty big uh, going concern at the time. And Somehow, what was your part in that? I had invented this uh, product called the, the the Buddy System that was a personal security device. Right. And they were in personal care. Okay. So they thought it kind of fit in their distribution channels. I see. Okay. How did they find you? I found them. I mean, I was you know going to all these trade shows. So like in Chicago, there's the houseware shows, the biggest trade show, I don't know, maybe in the so world. So you were taking the prototype of the buddy system to the trade show. Yeah. So I would walk around and I'd go into booths and and, uh, and so I'd say, well, who's the you know president, whatever. And they, oh, that guy over there talking to that guy. So then when the guy was through talking to somebody, I'd turn around, I'd go, hey, and, and I'd have a little brochure or prototype or something. Yeah. And uh, half the time they go, you know, what the hell, you know, get out of it. You know, they'd spin around their heels and walk away. Mm, yeah. But that's how I did, you know, all the big deals I ever do- I've ever done just about have been through trade shows. Okay. Walking in people's booths. Now, that's an important you know. point there. It takes shoe leather. I mean, you got to mm-hmm. have the moxie to yeah. pick up the phone, ring the doorbell, go to the trade show. That's the part that everybody yeah. thinks the, the, the right. caveman on the chair companies do. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do it for yeah. you. But it's... People think, oh, I've got this great idea. If I could just uh, give it to the right person or company, they'll they'll run with it, and I can make all this money. That idea is about one percent of it. Isn't yeah, it? right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what it, Edison said: "What inspiration is one percent, and it was ninety nine percent perspiration." That's so, right. You know, you got to not only have something that people want, but you got to be able to make it at the right price. It has to work. It's got to be you know good quality and. Uh, you know, and no one's going to uh, offer you any money for it until mm-hmm. they see all those. Sure, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, things happen. Now, I uh, was fascinated when uh, when Loy mentioned this, but uh, it reminded me of the guy on The Big Bang Theory, Howard, who had the toilet that was invented that was used on the space station. Huh. Now you have something somewhat like that experience, right? Yeah, that was. Uh, 
you know, uh, again, I was, you know, uh, I thought, well, boy, if you could come up with a portable gym that would uh, duplicate the benefits of free weights, you know, be great. So I uh, went through all this uh, prototype development and had, had got some funding and some deals done with some consumer product companies, but they didn't really, you know, move ahead with it. And it kind of got back in my court. Mm -hmm. And by then I had had these power springs I was using that were breaking under life cycle. So I had to come up with a new way to create torsional resistance. And so I created a spiral uh, molded shape out of uh, this proprietary elastomer and I called it Spiroflex. Mm -hmm. I built some more prototypes. And then I read an article, I was in a coffee shop and uh, the uh, medical director of NASA, uh, Roger Billica, was saying, well, you know, we've got these astronauts coming back from the Russian Mayor Space Station losing all this bone and muscle mass because you're in zero G, so it's like you're bedridden, you know, and, yeah. and your body just atrophies very quickly because you weigh zero, you're just, you're just floating up there. And uh, on Earth, you know, you've got your body weight at least to move around with that keeps your bones and muscles, you know, That's somewhere. how I stay yeah. in shape. Yeah, yeah. like, Lord, just moving around yeah. to, from bar to bar. To, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, I was able to contact him and said, hey, I think I, you know, I've got a solution, you know. Like, oh, yeah, right, you know. And, uh, well, I'm going to be around, you know, NASA, drop by, you know. So, I, yeah, I'm going to be down there in a couple, you know, down in Houston. So they, they had me in some little side room, and during yeah. lunch, a couple of engineers came in and kind of pulled down this, you know, cable. And the next day, they called me and said, hey, you can come back and do a full presentation in, you know, 48 hours. So I came back, and they had a room full of, Engineers and astronauts and flight surgeons, you know, three deep around some, yeah. you know, carousel. How old were you at this point? This was what, like 30? 98, you know, 97, 98, 18 years some. old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was, you know, in my 40s. Okay. And, uh, you know, at the end of the meeting, they said, you know, we think we want to fly this, which means, you know, let's, we want to put this up on the, uh, uh, in space. And they were building the space station at the time the, mm-hmm. the most mm-hmm. expensive man-made thing in the world you know it's like 100 billion dollars now and was your thought at that time oh my god now i've got to make this actually happen yeah <laughs> right now yeah. i remember you at this was many years in development yeah because i think somebody some of your partners had an exclusive on the thing and then they kind of sat on it and they gave it up and that's when you were able yeah. I, I say able you yeah. probably weren't too happy about it at the time but you regain control of right. this. Right, they walked away from it and paid me a little money, this consumer product company. And, uh, and they and, you know, funded some of the development. And, so uh, then you're in front of all these scientists. And, yeah, uh, you and know. like, you know, and the thing that, the alternative they had was, they called it the yo-yo. It was like a spinning uh, 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 flywheel with a rope on it. And then uh, you could do squats and things with it. It was a real goofy thing from Switzerland. And they saw my technology, they thought, wow, this is, you know. And I communicated and, and showed some studies of, you know, how it would duplicate the benefits of free weights. Mm-hmm. And they subsequently did their own studies and, and, and proved that also. And uh, so then it was like a mission critical that we had to get this up on the space station before the first crew got up there. Okay. So they were assembling all the parts, you know, with space shuttles and everything. And... Uh, so yeah, we uh, developed a system that would work in space and uh, provide up to 300 pounds of resistance for squats. And uh, so it was the first resistive exercise device ever developed developed for space. Don't be darned. And we were on the space station for 10 years, as, uh, and they'd yeah. work out an hour a day with it. And uh, we've got a spokes an astronaut spokesperson now in our in our company, and he he was on, on he was commander of, of expedition number 10. And uh, he worked out every day with it. And uh, mm-hmm. he said when he came back, he was actually stronger when he came back than when he left. Did you have to try this out on one of those vomit trips in the plane? Or yeah, like that? yeah. They uh, took it up on the vomit comet, the yeah. mm-hmm. KC-135. And uh, I got trained to go. And, mm-hmm. and uh, we were in the uh, uh, parabaric chamber. I forgot the name of it. But anyway, that's where they suck the air out. And you have an oxygen mask hanging down. And then you, you're taking a test. And then as you feel hypoxia... As you're going up in altitude, you're supposed to put your oxygen mask on and turn your oxygen on. Okay. Uh, but the unwritten uh, game was the last one to put his mask on won the you know won. Uh-huh. And so it was between me and this gal that worked at NASA, and uh, she she beat me. But uh, but yeah, so I got trained. But I never got to go up on the KC-135. Mm. Uh, but they did fly the uh, uh, 
uh, I read, it was called the uh, Interim Resistive Exercise Device. They did fly that a couple times on the uh, I read to test it and make sure it all worked. Once it spent its 10 years up there, where did you take that invention to develop it into more of a commercialized thing for all of us? Yeah, so right after, uh, you know, this was really moving along with NASA, then I went back to all the fitness companies I'd mm-hmm. been knocking on doors. And I'd make kind of those- got a little more credibility yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, now, I'm, you know, hey. My invention went to space. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're and like, that, that- hey, we got great, <laughs> we got some additional shelf space. <laughs> you know? Well, mine went to space. <laughs> yeah. Because I was telling Dick, if I invented something that went into outer space, I wouldn't be modest and matter of fact about it yeah. like you are. Yeah. yeah. No, I'd I, be uh, bragging about it at cocktail parties. Yeah. Well, I don't get invited to any parties, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're, I think I'm going to go have to sing a song about yeah, let's, let's, yeah, probably, uh, yeah, let's do that, can, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I'm thirsty. Yeah, me too. Come on, let's go down to the employee lounge and get a drink. Yeah, how about Paul? Isn't he something, man? A lot of stories to tell. That's so cool. Yeah, sure is. Yeah, imagine what it's like to actually invent something that goes up in the space station. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I'd be using that in cocktail conversation i'll guarantee you that i'll bet you would yeah oh yeah i mean the guy's so modest uh uh-huh. I, I wouldn't be <laughs> well you know if i invented something that went up into the space station yeah it goes something like this test test i've got a really pretty face my invention went to space. You should see my real cool place. My invention went to space. I just settled quite a case. My invention went to space. I won the three-legged race. My invention went to space. I make a lovely booyah base. My invention went to space. I wear my shoes without a lace. My invention went to space. I've been told I have great taste. My invention went to space. My boss tells me I can't be replaced. My invention went to space. I know that your intention is to talk with condescension about how much weight you're benching when you throw that in my face. And you trying to get attention, bragging how you broke convention by investing all your pension in the latest techno craze. Now it's with some apprehension, but you're forcing me to mention I'm in a whole nother dimension, cause my invention went to space. When I returned to Earth after using Spireflex technology almost every day over six months, I was physically stronger in every test. My sales grew at a record pace. My invention went to space. I went without carbs for 90 days. My invention went to space. Don't make him throw it in your face, Ace! You ain't even in the chain! Cause his invention, it don't went to space! I'm talking space! The final freaking front freaking tier. Space, the final frontier. That's right, from the country club plaza right here. Paul, listen, what did it feel like? I mean, when you'd walk outside at night and you'd look up in the sky and you'd say, well, sometimes I don't feel like maybe I've really done anything in my career and <laughs> maybe I'm, I have feelings of illegitimacy and I'm just kind of a fraud and you look up in the sky and go oh wait a minute no I'm not my invention's in space <laughs> yeah. 
I'm sorry, but it's, go ahead. Yeah, so like, we were taking yeah. it. We're knocking on the yeah. doors now. Yeah. Now, now you're Mr. Space right. Guy. So now I'm, I'm back to these companies and all these name brand, you know, and uh, and I say, you know, this is up on the space station or it's going to be up in the space station. And, you know, this is going to be a great marketing and here, you know, and I've got some new designs of new ways to package this in different kinds of uh, fitness uh, equipment that fits your market. And uh, so I was able, so I had two companies, Life Fitness, which is the number one commercial fitness, you know, uh, equipment company in the world. That's what you see when you go to the gym yeah. normally. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, a lot of Life, Life Fitness products. Life fitness. They own Hammer Strength and uh, Paramount, I think, and a bunch mm -hmm. of them. Then uh, I went to uh, Bowflex, uh, and they had just acquired Nautilus, uh, the consumer version of Nautilus, so they changed their name to Nautilus. And uh, I went back to them. So it turned out they, they both really wanted the technology. And uh, so I was able to, you know, they kind of, you know, were making offers back and forth. Mm -hmm. And obviously I knew that uh, with Bowflex that they, uh, the power rods that they had before in the Bowflex revolution, Bowflex, uh, you know, the original Bowflex, yeah. it's got those power rods. And the patents were running out and, and they were looking for a new uh, home gym. And so I felt like, you know, I had a pretty good shot to be the next infomercial okay. uh, if I did a deal with, uh, with those guys. And uh, so, yeah, we subsequently got a deal together, then developed an, uh, a new home gym called the Bowflex Revolution, powered by Spireflex, my technology. It's time has come. The revolution is here. This is the Bowflex Revolution family. The original Bowflex Revolution, the machine that introduced the awesome power of Spiroflex resistance. Bowflex Revolution home gyms define the cutting edge of home fitness. And that had a great run, didn't it? Yeah, they and it's still out there. They're still doing great. I mean, it's, it's done over 250 million in sales. So, wow. You know, so. And you only get about two thirds of that. Yeah, I only get you know, <laughs> one cent uh, off every, you know. Um, <laughs> well, now, so you've been very successful with these products and, and in the uh, well those are the successful ones and there's you know more unsuccessful well you know what uh, the learning path that's what i think a lot of people are going to be interested in hearing about because qvc was part of this path uh the the, the television marketing you actually were on the air uh hawking products that you were yeah. developing along the way let's talk about some of those products that you had paul what? yeah the uh QVC, I was able to get on with this product called the Power Stroke Modular Tool System, and it had a uh, lever arm, so it would take the force off your wrist, and you could use leverage of your forearm, and the uh, heads would snap on for sanding, scrubbing, and and, uh, uh, and ice scraping, hmm. and so uh, I, you know, made up uh, these injection, you know, tools uh, out of steel to taken the factory and you know injection mold the plastic parts and you actually it. had to finance fund yeah. all those prototypes and everything yeah, build, out of pocket the, right yeah, yeah build all the prototypes machine them out of blocks of plastic and test it and then uh now you got it. some advice early on from from some of these incubators or something uh, uh, did you, you know, work with as, yeah uh, school uh, umkc or any of those things or? matter of fact they used to have a uh, the first incubator in the midwest i think was the center for business innovation over here by umkc right i thought you had had something to do with yeah them. i was a tenant there uh okay but uh they introduced me to uh maybe one or two investors okay and, uh, then i found you know the rest but uh, uh so i got a, a minimal amount of investment to kind of keep keep things rolling along and, and my investors in, in the company that had the, you know, Spireflex technology, they, they got about, uh, you know, 15 times their money back, mm. you know, on their investment. So they were, hmm. they were Okay. And so you're building these prototypes <clears throat> for the, the uh, tools. Yeah. So then you got to, you know, uh, injection mold these plastic parts because that's how you can get the cost down and have a, you know, everything's made out of injection molded plastic, basically. And uh, but the tooling, you know, you can spend tens and tens and thousands of dollars for the the, the, the molds that go onto the injection molding machines. And so once you can get through that and get some parts and uh, you know get it all approved and go through the quality assurance process at like QVC, uh, then uh, they say, well, hey, you know, we think this might be something interesting. So uh, the first time I went out there, I was on three times in like a, a within two days mm -hmm. for like ten minutes a time. 
And I did pretty well, so they had me back a couple of times to do that. What was that like to go on there? What was the uh, backstage and all this kind of stuff? Yeah. At the time, they had a a Lazy Susan stage where they Mm -hmm. had three stages. And so you'd you'd be on one quadrant setting up all your props while they were live on the other part of the quadrant. And the problem I had was I had to have all these props, like a a bathtub with a ring around it. I had Mm. uh, wood uh, sheets that with the uh, paint that's blistered up to scrape off, mm-hmm. I had uh, you know mustard and, and ketchup on a countertop that I'd have to scrape off and scrub off, and yeah. had all these different props I'd have to prepare between each thing, and uh, and then yeah, they give you a little bit of training, then you go on live, and you know you just it's all about demonstration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they train uh, you just one day and tell you about how you're going to appear on camera and show you and get you comfortable yeah. with it, or yeah, back then it wasn't much training at all. I don't even think I had any training, but uh, but now more recently, Nick Bolton, our fitness director, he's been on QVC a few times, and uh, he actually went up there and, and spent you know uh, half a day with him in, in training with uh, one of their hosts. And this what is for it? other products. Yeah, this is for the fitness product. The oh, okay. So gym. so you're you're also on the air. Your company is, yeah. but you use this uh, this fitness guy, uh, personal trainer, and and model. Named Nick Bolton. He's yeah. a Kansas City guy, right? Yeah, Nick Bolton. He's he's been on a lot of TV commercials, and he was in our first uh, fitness shoot for our uh, still photography when we did the first original Oyo Gym like three or four years ago. Now that's Oyo. That's on your own. That's your current company. Yeah, Oyo. Oyo. Oyo Fitness is uh-huh. my uh, current company that uses the Spireflex technology I developed for NASA and uh, Bowflex. And now it's at a portable gym called the Oyo Personal Gym. Okay. And we're, we've got TV commercials out there, and we're on, you know, Facebook ads. Free weights are big, bulky, and can even injure you. Introducing the Oyo Personal Gym, the proven way to transform your body with Spiroflex technology. The Oyo Personal Gym. This one piece of equipment provides the same benefits as all these weights. Using these lightweight flex packs. Used by NASA astronauts on the space station, Spiroflex creates resistance without weights. And the Oyo Gym's double flex activation provides two exercises in each movement, building a balanced body in less time. With the Oyo Personal Gym, you can now fit fitness into your lifestyle. Is there an Oyo.com or something people can look into? The corporate site's uh, OyoFitness.com. OyoFitness.com. Yeah, OyoFitness.com. I see you're on Facebook a lot and things, so how do people find you? What, what's the easiest way to find you? To find us, you know, just you know, uh, Google uh, Oyo Gym, Oyo Gym. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, we've got a couple different sites out there. We just came out with a new site uh, for kind of a direct marketing. It's like a simplified page, so people have got to get through it quickly and uh, decide whether they want to buy it or not. And uh, I saw you in a kind of a cool <clears throat> little video you made, a little short form YouTube video with you and your Oyo airplane. Yeah. So. Uh, I didn't put any company money in it, but I did s- spend my own money to paint the airplane with the <laughs> OYO logo on it. Okay. And, uh, it needed a new paint job. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I, I fly it around a little bit for fun. And I was coming back from Portland and was flying by uh, Mount Hood. So I got a little video of Mount Hood there. And, uh, it's very cool. Yeah. It's a cool logo. It's great, great uh, branding that you have for that. So tell how how is OYO doing? I. I hear you're selling them all over the world now. Yeah, we just shipped a uh, container to uh, another one to Japan. Uh, the Japanese love it because it's so compact and uh, they like high-level engineering. Mm-hmm. And uh, They probably think it's a Japanese brand with that name. Yeah, anyway. yeah it's kind of an Asian-sounding, you know. Name. Oh, yo. And yeah. this is it, what we're looking at on yeah. the wall here, right? right? There, and yeah. We'll yeah. get a picture of that for our YouTube presentation. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Dick, I'd like to get some video of you <laughs> using Trying that. Trying to use yeah. that. Dude, doing some squats with that. It for looks the to me like two microphones on, uh, yeah. on, a, on a bike handlebar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everyone always kind of tries to relate to something new yeah. with something they've we'll known We'll get before. you in these leopard print <laughs> leotards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, those look good on you. Cool. Okay. Yeah. You know, we found uh, some success uh, on television, but uh, more success, at least in the U.S., with uh, uh, Facebook uh, advertising. Mm-hmm. So, we so Facebook a, works for you pretty well. well tell us about that. Yeah, Everybody's I mean, interested in... Yeah. I mean, Lloyd, you're a big advertising guy from way back, and uh, you know about the whole movement from uh, off of you know television to digital 
as far as you know advertising sure uh, i was there for all that stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> black and white to color even <laughs> <Right. going. laughs> so but what what facebook enables us to do is uh target different audiences and test uh, different ads against different audiences mm -hmm. and uh then whatever uh you know, cost per acquisition we we need a certain cost per acquisition right and if we can get that down let's say it's you know thirty dollars or whatever mm -hmm. if we can spend thirty dollars on facebook and make a sale for 150 bucks then of course every thirty dollars in you make 120. well then you got to subtract out your cost of goods right. and other stuff but so you keep keep testing different types of ads with the videos and the copy and the uh, headlines against different audiences and then whatever ones start to you know meet that cost per acquisition then you focus in on those and then you scale your uh, advertising you know now are you working with a firm or are you doing that in-house or how are you got a little bit of a little bit of both testing. i've got my my coo graham uh, ripple uh is really good at uh kind of managing that and understanding that and uh but we do have a is he a local yeah he's a local so, guy mm -hmm. yeah he used to have a company called uh, paleo fit meals Mm. that he ran for a while and uh but uh yeah he's a real smart guy and uh so he's a real big help and, and he uh kind of ran my kickstarter program we became the second highest funded kickstarter fitness product in history hmm. and we're over a million dollars now in, in crowdfunding uh purchases wow and uh and we've since you know and that was only for oh yo that was just the most recent product yeah the, yeah, you used yeah, Kickstarter, for the and yeah. then and is this the first product line you you've gone with Facebook on? Yeah, yeah, this is really our first intro into into the digital, uh, you know, Facebook. Have you space. have you uh, experimented with any other platforms or networks, uh, the, social? Yeah, the other ones, you know, uh, don't really do much. Instagram's got a little bit of life, but it's it's pretty much Facebook, and then uh, of course Amazon. We've got mm -hmm. a pretty big presence on Amazon. And uh, there's a lot you've got to invest in advertising inside the Amazon system and uh, bidding on keywords. And then you've got to have a great page. And, you know, uh, it's just got to, you know, all. So you bid on the words you can have against someone else. Yeah. In your, I'll be done. Yeah. So, so it's the, very complicated, wow. yeah. isn't it? It makes my head explode because I'm more oh, of an, a, a yeah. designer, inventor, you know. And, yeah. So you might, for super duper, you might bid, uh, have to bid a little higher than the yeah. guy over across town, huh? Yeah. Okay. Like we were, we were bidding on home gyms on Amazon, and all of a sudden we're spending thousands of dollars because everybody's clicking on, you know, home gyms, you know. So we had to be a little more specific, obviously, you know, personal gym, portable gym. Yeah. But, yeah, it's it's really complex. Mm, wow. So it's, uh, so you got to be pretty smart. We've got a good cons Amazon consultant. used to work there is our Amazon consultant. So that helps a lot. So advice to people out there with uh, looking to uh, expand the market share with their products, that Facebook still is is a really important yeah. thing to look at. Even you know a lot of the people say, oh, the, you know, all the younger people are going to uh, you Instagram, know the other one, Twitter, Instagram, is, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> But uh, Facebook's still far and away the the kingpin. Yeah, it is, and uh, and older people, you know, over forty five, fifty five, a, a lot of them are on Facebook, and uh, and they're on their desktops watching it, you know, on a full on you know screen on their desktop. And this is kind of interesting because one of the functions at this little private gym, it's a personal, mm -hmm. very portable thing where you can sit at your desk maybe get up next to your desk you might be in a cubicle and and you're not bothering anybody else nobody else knows you're in there having a workout mm -hmm, yeah and you can basically run through what 40 or 50 different we, exercises we actually nick bolton we've actually shot 197 exercise videos and they're up in our at oyofitness.com and we have 60 workouts and then we had a 10-week uh program that these are just things for at your desk you mean no or this is for a total this for the the, yeah. the big classes no, and things. No, you can do all this at your desk. Oh, okay. Uh, if you had a chair and some place to stand, you can do uh, 197 exercises. Wow. See, that's what's so <laughs> cool about this is, you know, they're telling you out there, oh, sitting's the new smoking. You're going to yeah. die if you sit at your desk. Exactly. And, and uh, I mean, I don't know if that's as 
the big panic as it was like three or four years ago mm -hmm. when when you were first rolling this out but my gosh oh it's a big yeah it's people. perfectly can prevent people from getting whatever that horrible thing is that happens when you sit at your desk yeah your body just you know atrophies and uh, <laughs> you know the human body was designed you know to survive back you know in whatever caveman times you know you gotta go out there and kill something and eat it and uh, find a mate to procreate and uh, but now to be successful you just have to sit at a desk in front of a computer yeah so your body isn't designed for that so it's going to fall apart you now know. have you invented anything for the procreation part yet still no, working on something uh, on there or no uh, okay. I, I, did, I did have a consulting firm years ago that i would help inventors and yeah some lady came to me with a device that she wanted to get on the market <laughs> it was a female condom but I <laughs> okay <laughs> all right that's an hsn qvc thing <laughs> that probably didn't sell well after the power stroke <laughs> see you had a massager Let's talk about some of these other inventions yeah. that you did and were they you know, were, were they all just kind of lessons along the way or were any of them really kind of uh did you get a hit any doubles or triples out of that or was it all right. just kind of like leading up to the big invention yeah. that, that finally hit yeah kind of all, all the above i mean uh, i start out with maybe you know 50 product ideas and then i'd do drawings on some of them and then I would go to the patent uh, depository or whatever you call it over here and at Linda Hall Library in the mm -hmm. basement you can look up all the patents this is before you can go online and do it on mm -hmm. Google and then I would you know figure out well what do I think is a really unique product that serves a unique need that I could still get a patent on because I, I didn't so want you to. thought through that all yourself and you yeah. just used common sense and right. logic and did yeah. some research and yeah. you didn't go to one of these patent attorneys and all that. Talk to me yeah. about, I mean, that is the most daunting thing. It's like the the pinnacle of the complexity industry. Yeah. Uh, People have, you know, what are the patents? In the old days, it was, uh, if you invented first and you could prove you invented first, then you could you could get a patent. Even if someone filed a patent ahead of you, you could, if you could prove that you invented it first, you would you could get your patent, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Approved. Now it's it's whoever uh, patents first. Mm. They changed. It's more like a European style law. But yeah, where today if someone wants to you know get a patent on, you can do a provisional patent. You can actually go online and do kind of a half-ass provisional patent, and and it'll kind of I believe will pretty well protect your uh, you know idea until you have enough money or decide to move ahead and, and have a patent attorney do a real you know full-on patent. And so you still need a patent attorney to protect it once it's viable. Yeah, I mean, if you really... So you know, you're really just kind of doing a little CYA, Hail Mary, yeah. you know, hopefully this will hold up, and even though you really can't afford to defend it, right? I mean, I've heard I've heard people say that a patent is only as good right. as exactly. how much money you have to defend yeah. it, exactly. and that the big boys can roll right over you and grab it from you. Hmm. And well, you know, I don't know if they can do that but you know if someone's out there with an idea and they go oh someone's gonna I can't tell anyone I can't show anybody because they're gonna steal it or oh, here sign this non-disclosure agreement and I'll show you my ideas like you know uh, I'm probably working on 10 ideas you know similar and if I sign this non-disclosure agreement you're gonna sue me because you're gonna think I knocked your idea off right in reality I was like a, a 10 years ahead of you on this mm -hmm. thing. so I'm not gonna sign that no one's gonna sign it so you got to show companies like I did you know without you know any protection except what you might get under the patent laws so I felt like I had a good patent position so you had patent pending basically when you're showing these yeah. things to everybody yeah yeah and, and even and, and back then it was I, I knew I could prove I'd invented it first even before I got the patent but but usually I'd, I'd have the patent attorneys do a patent search you know if I each level you get into the thing you still think it's viable then you spend more money on your intellectual property but at first like today if you have a great idea and you, you know you've done some work on it, have a prototype, and people think it's great, uh, you could go out there and, and obviously research it and see what competitors are out there, and then do a patent search on Google, and uh, then have something viable, done an improvement, then mm -hmm. you could go on, uh, uh, I think you could do it through the U.S. Patent and Trademark site, and you could file your own professional patent by just writing up some stuff and on it. And you've done that before, and right? Yeah, I did that once. And uploading some photos and stuff but like that. But then you found people that you were comfortable working with that didn't, uh, you didn't feel like you were getting gouged. Well, well, well then, you, then you keep going around. Then if some company goes, 
hey, you know, we, you know, General Motors says, yeah, that's a great uh, new carburetor that, you know, will save 10% gas. You know, yeah, we, we definitely would go with this thing. Do you have a patent on it? Yeah, I've got a professional patent. And they'd say, okay, well, look, we'll, we'll do a license deal with you and we'll pay you X amount up front and pay you so much uh, percentage. And, and uh, you can use, you got to get then go to your attorney and get a patent, a real patent filed on that mm-hmm. thing that will be licensed to us that will protect us. So, and then at that point, hey, yeah, I've got the money. I'll go spend, you know, $7,000 and have a utility patent filed on my carburetor that saves 10% more gas because GM's ready to go with it. You know, well, now in Kansas City, can you think of any resources that stand out in your mind? That, to help inventors? or Yeah. Is there anybody or, I mean, we maybe it's not appropriate yeah. to, to mention, but if there's somebody that you've got tattooed on your... You know, just because they've done a great job or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem with uh, helping inventors is usually inventors don't have any money mm-hmm. and they've got crazy ideas. Mm-hmm. So nobody wants to talk to you. Mm-hmm. So there's no viable business out there except, you know, these companies that want to take your money uh, for fees to, you know, pretend like they're going to take your product to, you know, get it on the market. Sure. So that's yeah. the problem. The lawyers that are established, they really don't have time to. Well, they're all happy to talk to you and they're great, you know, attorneys and everything, but they got to. You know, charge their hourly. You know, and they're four or five hundred bucks and up. An yeah, hour, they, they right? can be. Yeah, and uh, and they're not going to go. Hey, this is such a great idea. I'll go on, in on it with you, and I'll take a percentage or take some stock. I mean, they've heard that one. Yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, they're they just want to bill out. You know, hours. Mm-hmm, sure. Uh, but they'll they'll give you a quote on, on a patent. I'll go. Oh well, this you know, I think you need this, this many claims. I think it needs to be this this many drawings. So I think it's going to be four thousand dollars to get this filed as a utility patent at the patent office and. And they may hold, you know, to that, to the dollar. If you say, hey, look, okay, I'll do it for four grand, you know. So you're having to make some, connect some dots and make some assumptions as far as what's the viability of this thing. And do I think I'll get companies interested in partnering with me on the manufacturing? And I'm going to have to put 20,000 into getting prototypes made or. Right. You kind of. And then you look at all these different considerations. So you've got to be kind of a strategic visionary to be able to pull this off because you're coordinating all these different risks. Right. Right. And And you've got a one out of a hundred chance to be, to make money on your invention. You know, maybe it's a one or 2% chance. What do you think the chance is (laughs) that you'll invent something that winds up in space. Yeah. In space. <laughs> but, you know, I, I probably invented, you know, 50 different things. So Tell me uh, you know, something I, that was... 1% chance to be what successful. What was your worst idea? Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, Dick's always there trying to embarrass yeah, people. Yeah. yeah worst uh-huh. idea. Yeah. Uh, God, I don't know. Uh, was there anything you would have been embarrassed to produce <laughs> and you just kind of shoved it in a back yeah. drawer and said, yeah. why did I even think of that? Yeah. Now, one cool thing they never got to the market was the uh, palm dryer. So you'd have this uh, little uh, uh, sleeve that would go over your hand and, and it would go around your palm, and there was okay. little holes at the bottom of it. And on top of it, there was a little fan and a heater. So it was like a little blow dryer on the back of your hand. Mm, and below your sweaty palms. Then below your palms, it would blow out the hot air. So you could run your fingers through your hair and dry it and style your hair with your fingers. Oh. And then you could snap on... Uh, little combs onto it, so I'll be darned. It kind of gave you because that's how I would dry my hair. I could run my fingers through it and kind of, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I had that uh. thing, you know, prototyped. I'd built, you know, these custom, you know, working prototypes and everything, and took it to Con Air and all these companies. And then, then some guy had gotten a, a patent in the meantime. We've got a guy you know. outside with a palm dryer. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, so do you want me to let him in? Yeah. No. <laughs> No, I'm perfectly all right with my moist palms. In fact, I prefer them moist. <laughs> That's great. Gosh. But yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of failures, a lot of money down the drain. Well, you, as a designer, I notice you always had high design. That you got a great office, and and I mean, you buy the stuff. You you buy high design stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, you kind of. You like uh, that's part of the architect yeah, in yeah, you, isn't it? Yeah, and I was an industrial designer too. You know, um, so you've had a lot of success, and you've got this cool office. How long have you been down here on the plaza in this cool office? Oh gosh, about twenty since ninety two. Is that right? Yeah. Now I so, notice as we look out the window, the Shake Shack is right across the street from us here. Any any exciting that's things going add on? To, uh, that's got to add office? to the action a yeah, little. Well, 
told the sniper where to set up over here. And uh, <laughs> you were here the day that they had a little shake up at the Shake Shack. Yeah, weren't you? I was uh, sitting here and I heard five shots in rapid, you know, mm -hmm. fire, and I saw like uh, four or five guys with hoodies running away from the corner of Shake Shack. Wow! And, and they uh, didn't have any carry out food with them. I guess not, but yeah. And and the police, everybody came, but you know, I don't think they found any even any bullet holes. So I don't know, you know, where they were shooting because hmm. they didn't hit anything. Well, that's some action, but you see, sure see a lot of people down here. This is a wonderful environment. Got a little wet bar here. It's a great place yeah, for an inventor you know, to hang uh, out. You got a few yeah. offices up here, don't yeah, you? Yeah. So got an innovation center down the hall mm -hmm. where you do some. That's where Graham works in there, and uh, we've got a little. Uh, communication system where we can turn the big screen and, and do video conferencing. Wow. And, uh, mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Now you guys have some of a, a, a bit of a history together. Uh, you've done some traveling together and things yes, like that. Is did. there anything you want to talk about there? <laughs> we did. We, uh, you know, Paul had a trip. I, you know, I guess it was about 25 years ago. We just decided we'd have a little guy trip over to Europe and and just see what kind of trouble we could get into. Mm -hmm. Paul had a business meeting up there with Phillips in, what town was that? Groningen, Holland. Groningen, Holland. And so we thought, well, you know, let's just go see what's going on in uh, Amsterdam and stuff. Okay, yeah, sure. And so, we were heading to Prague, too, because Prague was, like, really coming on, you know, as the new yeah. chorus of the, you know, uh, Eastern Bloc. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Paul's a lot of fun. I mean, you know... We we had some good. I've been to Amsterdam. Time. It seems like a town you could have a good time in. That's right. We <laughs> mm -hmm. tried to get to Prague. What we couldn't go to Prague. They wouldn't let us in there or something. Well, you're uh, you had a uh, was, well, Loy, uh He created uh, Harry's Bar and Tables. You mm -hmm. know, he, he created every. He did the paintings. He you know designed the interior. He got Harry in there. You know, he ran that thing and created the whole. And it's still there, just like Loy created it. So it was about that time. Uh, and you, you own the Buzzards Beach, too, before that. Yeah, Buzzard Was this Beach. before Harry's? No, yeah, Buzzard Beach was way back. I I mean, I was 27 when we yeah. did, Bob Reagan and I did that. Yeah. yeah. So it was this was just before Harry's and all Yeah, that's right. It was in between. Yeah. So we, we were probably 30 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Good time to go on. Yeah. And you had... Uh, one of your servers had uh, gone to... Uh, oh, that Balzano, was... Balzano, Italy. No, that was in, uh, from some... From another place that down you in Westport. Yeah. No. Oh, you just knew her. Yeah, it was just a, a friend who okay. invited us to stop by there, yeah. and and yeah, we visited this young lady, and she took us to some interesting places, and and the guy that owned the restaurant where she worked had about uh, what a t ten or twelve young girls show up to meet us, it, and we, we come uh, in there at midnight. Yeah, and they op he opened it up, and he was there just him and, and, and your friend and uh, they, they proceed to the service like a you know five course pasta meal okay all right yeah wow at midnight and brought all these young with ladies more waitresses than you needed kind of huh? look at us like yeah. you know like we were these monkeys. guys are from America yeah, yeah these are some American these are American guys. guys and they yeah. all pulled up chairs these ten beautiful young gals are working the shops there uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And wanted to hear about about America. I had these mm -hmm. cowboy boots on, and one mm -hmm. said, "Well, uh, good touch. Why did you all wipe out the Indians?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my! So, well, they did go back, didn't they? A little before my time. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that something? But, uh, yeah, it was an interesting time. Yeah, you know, I don't know how much we can you know uh, get into this if this is a G-rated uh, yeah. podcast, but uh, there were some wild, wild times, and. Uh, so we did. We spent a little time together, and then we uh, we played baseball together in this probably 1970 or something. That's yeah. where we met. And Hope was that Hobart's team. What was yep. Loy like as a baseball player back then? Do you remember? No. You know, he, he was probably better than me, but uh, yeah. not. No. We were probably the last guys in the lineup when they you know you? couldn't okay. find anybody else to bat. They were you yeah, know, there you call go. Mm. Loy or me. You were the guys that helped the catcher put on his equipment. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. It wasn't a stellar team either, if I remember no. right. I mean, we. Yeah. What, what we thing had a about good time. what Lloyd would do? He worked at the uh, that drugstore. What was the name of that? Uh, Parkview, and then it was Revco. Revco, yeah. yeah. Mm. And he would uh, get on the microphone, machine. and he would just be like a comedian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all these little old ladies were in there shopping. And he'd go, "Ladies, blue light special light," you know, and, and he'd come up with some crazy 
<laughs> and people are running around looking for these you know, there you go. friends yeah. of mine would come in and I would announce that the pedicula side that they ordered is is ready for them to pick up <laughs> okay <laughs> well but you know you know you're old by the way that was in mission shopping center okay <laughs> which is gone and, and you know you're old when they tear down the shopping center where you had your first job yeah and then they build another one mm -hmm. and then they tear it down <laughs> <laughs> and they're just now building another one oh, i just go. i oh you know, my. i'm not wishing them ill but i hope i live long enough for the fourth one oh yeah. wow good guy. put a statue of you up on the, the oh, next one that's you, right with oh. the microphone in your hand so paul francis what what there's so many things to talk about you're you're a pilot and you've done some interesting things. You got your own plane. You're you, you're on a ranch. Yeah, you're a rancher. Yeah, I kind of tried to. You know, I, I don't run cattle. my cattle anymore. I've got I lease out the land now. But at first, yeah, I had my. Did own you cattle eat your cattle. cattle or what? No, it was. Uh, you'd have to kind of ship them off to the uh, feedlot for a. Uh, oh, know, fatten them up. Uh, yeah. Give so, them some uh, grain. Yeah. Now, where was the ranch located? It's it's just a little hour, about an hour west of Kansas City. Oh, okay. All right. Good. And. Uh, I've been out there. I've had it for ten years now. And, yeah, uh, but yeah, we run cattle out there. And uh, what is it that makes it different from a farm? Is it the animals makes it a ranch, I think and the, the cattle, corn makes yeah. it a I farm? I gotta defer to you, Paul. Well, yeah, What's the know. deal? You know, I think know. those cattle. It sounds better. I think it's cooler to say ranch. Ranch than sounds farm. better. Yeah, so yeah. Ranch. ranch has a good feel about it. Yep. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all in the packaging and marketing, and you know, and that, it's called uh, Black Hat with the H, Black Hat Ranch. Okay. All right. And was, then you'll travel around the country to promote the product sometimes, or do trade shows, I guess. Still, uh, for my uh, and you've got for my stuff now for my uh, yeah for products. Oyo, uh, yeah. Yeah, we because I know you've got shows. one of those kind of mobile f home type. I mean, it's it's a it's a cool. I've got a little yeah, little van that uh, you know you can sleep in. And, uh, mm -hmm. I uh, I put prototypes in there. Yeah, and travel around and mm -hmm. uh, pull them out. And, uh, hey, look at this. What's uh, in your brain now, rattling around? Any hints of what the next big thing might be, or you know, you everybody listening no. will not yeah. tell. Yeah, right. no, no, no. Right. Yes, yes. That's yeah. a verbal non-disclosure. Yeah. Yes, yes. Please do not right. tell or take any ideas. Do not okay. steal his right. ideas. Yeah. What's going on in the mind of the mad you know, inventor now? And we have a, a product line at Oyo Fitness of uh, bigger and more, uh, you know, uh, heavy-duty. Uh, exercise devices that put out more resistance and do more things so uh we using got, that spyro yeah, spyro yeah flex. using the spyroflex technology. technology so we're going to put something up on kickstarter probably in uh april and uh this new uh, uh version of the oyo gym on steroids that puts out a lot more resistance mm, and uh, okay. you can do more things with and then we've got a a, a home gym that we'll be coming out with after okay. that okay Cool. Uh, so and it's all going to be under the OYO brand? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's all right. Let's out before that. Loy, have you ever had anything you wanted to try to invent? Uh, any ideas? Uh, yeah, I, well, I got a list of things, but I always kind of get stalled out at the yeah. patent uh, well, process. Well, here's the only idea I ever had. Let me just run it by you guys and see. When my kids were little, they had the plastic bottles that they drank their milk out of. You know, and they'd hold mm -hmm. them up like this. Yeah. And they had the kind of the plastic bags inside. Yeah. Well, my idea was that's kind of neat the way they hold that bottle up and drink out of it. What if that bottle looked like a musical instrument? So you would make the bottle that looked like a plastic trumpet or saxophone. So when they were drinking, hmm. it looked like they were holding a musical instrument up. That'd and we fun. call it music. Oh, for hey. Huh? There you go. There we go. All there right. There you go. And All that's right. as far as the idea ever went. Yeah. So. If there's a development partner out there who would like to work with Dick on music, there you go. Yes, yes. Okay. it's all patented. I or, know or just that. want to steal yeah. his idea right now. Yeah, and, and I'm, not, I'm writing know. the patent out right now. <laughs> He's got P a patent number. How do you spell yeah. that? P A T. Yeah. <laughs> now, by the time this podcast is out, this will be all locked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I had one guy come to me with an idea for behind behind bars. He said, well, you know, you're in the shower. You don't want to use your bar of soap, you know, for your behind. So I thought I'd come out with a, 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 pr a product called Behind Bars. Okay. And the packaging would show the soap behind these steel bars like it's in prison. Right. And uh, kind of like the pet rock, you know, and Behind Bars. I got to get a trademark. We got to get on this right away. 
<laughs> wow, this is gold. This is. I gold. thought you were going with a, a kind of a different shaped soap, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a little triangle thing. You know, the like yeah. problem with yeah. that product is if you drop it, you can't pick it up <laughs> yeah. because that'll be a bad day for you. Yeah. You get sold in prison. Yeah. Uh, oh well, well, we've been talking to Paul Francis, Kansas City inventor with products all over the earth and in space. That's right, in space. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. What a what a great conversation and continued luck on Oyo. A great a great product line. That well, thanks for having me. This has been an enjoyable experience. Now, can can I have a drink? Yeah, but there. You know what? Before before we let thing. you go, we do have one. We have a little contest. Yeah. That we'd like for so you I have to, to use my brain for. E it? Oh yes, yeah. yes, just a little bit. It's called Germany or Florida. Germany or Florida, Germany or Florida, Germany or Florida, things are so effed up there. Paul, the craziest crimes all happen in either Germany or Florida. I don't know what the deal is. There's something in the water, but it's, it's some kind of illness that goes on. But every crazy, bizarre crime happens in either Germany or Florida. And what we're going to do is, Dick is going to read to you a crime, and you have to determine, did this crime occur in Germany or Florida? And now, when a young 27-year-old man sat in a first-class seat he didn't pay for, flight attendants tried to move him, and they were startled when he told them that he was a pilot and wanted to sit in the pilot jump seat. See, it's a theme thing. Yeah, I, 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 okay. pilot. According to the yeah. arrest report. Well, concerned, they removed him from the plane. He then followed an airport employee with a cleaning cart onto a service elevator, and he got off on the main floor, took off his pants, and got on a $75,000 luggage tug, telling the driver he had a flight to catch. <laughs> Frightened, the driver bailed, and the man drove the vehicle onto a taxiway, pantless, a firefighter later tackled him until police arrived. An airport spokesman said a few jetliners had to hold while things cleared. Now, Paul, your decision is, was this Germany or Florida? Mm, gosh, when you're halfway through, I was thinking there, maybe there's some hints of, you know, uh, palm trees or anything like that, but I, I wasn't listening close enough, so I don't know if you had any hints in there. But No hints. You know, there's... There's obviously a lot more drugs available in, in Florida than in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good point. You know, uh, so uh, I don't know. I guess I just have to guess Florida. Florida it is! You're correct, sir! The winner! <laughs> Congratulations, Paul Francis. What do I win? You won a free oil personal gym. <laughs> The curtain where Nick Bolton is now standing. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Great talk. Well, that was fun. Yeah, okay. I enjoyed it. No, we had that much fun. Thanks again to inventor and all-around good guy Paul Francis. Check out his stuff and company at oyofitness.com. Join us again when we find somebody else interesting to talk to. Loy, do the honor. You might love it. You might hate it. It's my favorite freaking show. 